Dendritic printing is going to be the challenge or prompt for week two of 2021 in my Facebook group, Two Old Crows Mixed Media. Now, dendritic just simply means having a branch form resembling a tree. And dendritic printing is a very simple process utilized to create amazing prints. So stop on over to my Facebook page at Two Old Crows Mixed Media and join us for this weekly challenge. My name is Peg, my channel, Two Old Crows Mixed Media. Hit that subscribe button and of course that notification bell will let you know when I upload additional content. Dendritic printing starts simply with two pieces of glass. So what I am going to do is create some tags that we can utilize to print up on and I'm doing that with just simple cardstock and I have of course cut one corner off of my hotel key card using that as my template to cut my, my edges and uh, my crocodile to create that hole. So we are going to create some quick and easy, inexpensive tags to use in this dendritic printing process. Just get those scraps out of the way and pull the gel press out because I do want to put a background on these before and I want to do the dendritic print over the top of it. I have laid down cold gray on my gel press and I will pull out just some simple um, things out of the house to create some texture or some interest. That is a empty spool of thread. Of course, some bubble wrap from the multitude of Amazon packages that my husband says I receive and yes I do and we'll just put some of that cold gray background down on these tags. This paint dries fast so I have to I have to work fast I mean I have to to um, add a little more to, to get some workable paint here. So I'm going to come back with the yellow ochre, come back over it again with the bubble wrap, and I'm looking for something circular. So there's a vitamin pill lid that I'm going to use, and now I'm just laying some yellow ochre on this. I like those two colors together, that cold gray and, and yellow ochre has kind of a blue and yellow look to me. Cold gray looks more blue to me than it, than it does gray. It's a very blue gray, in my opinion, or in the way that my eye reflects that light. And now I'm just coming back in with um, some purple, light blue. Again, just creating a little bit of interest with some, some texture, some design into that gel plate and pulling, pulling the color off onto the tags. Ultramarine blue and light blue. My onion packaging, the bag that my onions were in. Brayer that see if we get anything off of that and I think we're starting to get some decent background I'm very fond of the bubble wrap as you can tell just a key card going across randomly. Don't think this through. Just just go. The more you think about it, the the um, less creative you become. So let your bright brain take over. Now you can see that I'm doing Rolodex cards, and and if you look in that upper right hand corner of the screen, you'll see see the Rolodex sitting there. I just a Rolodex and as I work on anything 
I'm going to put a background on those Rolodex cards, and my intent is to come back in with uh, quotes, my favorite quotes. You know, you're always looking for a quote or something of inspiration to put in your journals, and then I will have this Rolodex full of inspirational quotes that I can pull from when I need them. And I just pulled out some additional sheets of cardstock. I haven't cut them into pegs yet. I just found that I wanted a few more backgrounds. So now let's get to the dendritic painting. Remember when I did the uh, video on making your paper and bought the picture frames to use as my mold and decal for that? I said, save the glass that's in those picture frames. You're going to need it. These are the two sheets of glass out of two 8x10 picture frames. I've just put the ink or the paint, I mean, inside the glass and then sandwich the glass together. And now I'm pulling the print off of that. So that release, you have to be very careful with the release. You don't want to take it side to side. You want to pull it directly up and release that paint or release those two pieces of glass from each other. And then you can pull your print off of that glass. So let's lay a little bit more paint down and do it once again. I'm going to brayer it this time, put it together and give it just a little push. And now very carefully lifting that up. And all of those cells, dendritic cells, have been formed by the two pieces of glass being pushed together so that paint has gone out into that branch-like or that dendritic cell formation. And that's how easy it is. I'm just wiping it off my glass with a baby wipe. And then we'll come back in with some orange. I got a little too much, I think, so I'm going to pull some off. I don't know why. It probably could would have been just fine. Now I'm going to push that down. Pulling it apart. I found that. When you set the glass together, if you offset it slightly, it gives you the capability to um, pull that up without moving it side to side. So just make sure you have a little lip when you set it together. Look at look at that! Isn't that amazing? Or isn't it in the print that comes off so interesting? I wound up not being overly crazy about these color choices, although I think the dendritic print is very nice. And at the end of this video, you will see a second video called More Dendritic Printing. Um, once I get it uploaded, uh, it will give you a whole other video of doing this process without the background. Now I'm just going to pull my little Rolodex cards out and uh, glue those together. I thought I would just share with you what I'm doing here. I have them all printed and, and ready to go, so I'm just going to glue those together and, and stick them on my Rolodex. And I'm going to um, put some dendritic prints on them as well but I needed to get them glued together in order to do that. Well, I guess I didn't have to. 
I preferred to. Black. And a squish. Release to create the cell. And here we're coming back in with the with the blue. I think the black and the blue look really good together. There we go. And one more on that and see if we can get one more pull. You get quite a few pulls off of this. And you actually get the enjoyment of two because you have the top piece of glass and the bottom piece of glass. Look at that. Isn't that nice? I really like that one. And there is my Rolodex card. And if you follow along with me and, and watch my channel, you'll see me throughout the year using these Rolodex cards. I, and I'm not doing any specific video on the Rolodex per se. I'm just going to include them in, in everything I do until we get to a complete Rolodex full of backgrounds imprinted and then I'll go through and try to decorate each and every one of those. So I may decorate them along the way. Who knows? Plans change in that life. And there's that orange. You can kind of see, you know, the difference in the imprints when you just lay down a dot of paint and allow the glass to spread it, or if you brayer it and spread it that way. So there's there's a lot of different ways you can do this. And I am a firm believer in just play with it until you find what you like and find what looks good to you. And then go with that. I'm going to just get the rest of the ink off of that before I clean those plates. I'll clean, once again, just a baby wipe is what I'm using to clean that. And then I dry it with just a regular shop rag. And now I'm going to create the journaling cards by adhering coffee stain paper to the back of each one of these tags. And we'll let those dry and then we will cut out, cut them out. And now we have them all with their coffee stain back. And I want to add just a bit more interest. So I pulled out this script stamp. Um, you know, there's just some spaces there that I thought would look good with a with a little more coverage or with a little more decoration. So I pulled out this script stamp and some vintage photo ink. And I will go around the outside edge of these as well. Um, I'm actually using potting soil um, instead of vintage photo. So that is potting soil ink. And just trim up that coffee stain paper.
Put a little scripting on the back. And now we'll just kind of do the same to the to the rest of the cards that need need that little added extra. We'll continue to dress these up with with a little ink here and there, kind of creating some halo effects on the back of the cards and just making sure that those edges are covered and and everything is kind of attention paid to detail. Here on the back of this card, there's a little um, way the coffee stain is taken, and I just want to to follow that. This is some. Um, uh, Asimic writing that I'm putting on this card just simply because there was a, a white space there and what better place to fill with words that mean absolutely nothing. I'm taking the Sharpie and just going around the outside edges of the card um, in order to get, get that um, white edge non showing and I was just kind of demonstrating that um, Asimic writing there on the white piece of cardstock. We'll just ink around this blue and black with a little bit of black. And now I'm just going to end this by detailing them off with some jute. This is three strand jute. I'm just unraveling the three strands and distressing it a little bit. I think it makes it look a little more interesting than just the the two pieces of jute up there, we'll do that to all three of those. This is just white cotton kitchen string, and I am placing that on top of the blue and black card. So that, that completes those. This is just a journal page I did with the dendritic printing as well. I thought you'd like to see that. And that completes what we're looking for in this particular prompt or this weekly challenge. So please pop on over to the Facebook group and post your finished images. I would love to see them. And if you have not subscribed, please do so. And of course, that notification bell will let you know when additional content is uploaded. Bye for now.